Hey everyone, Joe here with 360 Comics. Over the weekend, I got to head to a little comic show over in Wayne, New Jersey, about an hour and a half from my house. I got to see some friends, hunt some comic books, and pick up some great deals. Before we get into my haul, I just want to remind you guys I would appreciate it if you would like this video, leave a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button. You can also go follow over on Instagram and enter our 6,000 follower giveaway for this copy of Warlock number 12, the origin story of Pip the Troll. And stay tuned here on YouTube for an announcement in the next couple weeks about our 1,500 subscriber giveaway. For those of you who aren't located on this part of the East Coast, New Jersey has a fantastic comic book community. In fact, the group that booked this event that I went to the past weekend does monthly events in New Jersey and has been doing so since the early 90s without skipping a beat. I think it's fantastic that they get people together that often to do the things that we all love. Now, I got a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different vendors. I've got it um, grouped together by vendor. I'm going to talk about obviously how much I paid for it and then at the end we'll go through the numbers and kind of look at what I think everything is worth and kind of the more conservative end of what I think I'll actually be able to sell it for. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because as usual I'm putting the really nice stuff last. First up is a small group of four books that I got from the first vendor I visited during the day, and I apologize, I got this guy's business card and wanted to give him a shout out, but I misplaced it between the convention and now, so I apologize. If you know who this person is, or if you're the person, please leave it in the comments below. First book I picked up from this guy is Ghost Rider number 15, a classic early 90s gimmick cover this one is glow in the dark in fact i believe this was the first glow in the dark comic book cover ever uh, i might not be correct about that but i'm pretty sure it was it's got a, a, an amazing cover art um and you know people go after this book for that reason there's definitely some speculation on ghost rider right now some rumors about a possible casting for the mcu but uh only time will tell when we're gonna see this character on the big screen next either way this book sells really nicely people are always willing to pick it up so i snagged a copy uh bundling in with that here's a book i've been speculating on recently we've got the Rise of Kylo Ren number three. Now, this book is a key issue because it's the first ap appearance of Avar Chris, who is the main character of Star Wars High Republic. For those of you who don't know, the current Star Wars run of High Republic is very, very popular, introducing a lot of new characters and new storylines. Um, and, you know, it's it's great. It's, it's selling out in stores. I, I see people picking it up every week at my LCS um, and the main character in the storyline is their first appearance is in this book. Um, you know, personally, I, I think that it's possible that we could see a High Republic television show, whether animated or live action, or maybe even a movie involving the characters from High Republic, especially because the Old Republic series was uh, recently canceled. They, they decided not to do that, so they might go with the, the High Republic route, especially due to how popular the comic series is. So I've been picking these up as well as copies of High Republic number one. Uh, these next two books are definitely staying in the personal collection here. We got X-Men number 19, the first appearance of Mimic. This is a lower grade copy, but it's definitely higher grade than the coverless copy that currently sits in my collection. So that was an, a nice, uh, you know, uh, hole filler for, for the time being. But I am very excited to put a copy with a cover into my personal collection. And I'll probably let that coverless copy go. Same thing with this next book. It doesn't replace anything. I actually have never owned this book. We've got X-Men number 24, the first appearance of Locust. So we got we got two awesome Silver Age X-Men first appearances. If you guys know me, you know that I am big on X-Men, and I'm, I'm working on not only this run, but the Claremont run as well. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy to uh, have picked these two up. Um, I ended up getting a great deal. I bundled all this stuff together, these four books, and paid $120 a piece. Uh, not a piece. $120 total for these books. Um, I believe 
the the the, the two X Men books were marked at sixty five and seventy five. Um, and ended up, you know, kind of saying, okay, well, if we do 50 a piece and then I'll do 20 for the other two books. And, uh, yeah, we were able to make a deal. I was so stoked on that to pick up, um, you know, a, a popular character like Ghost Rider, a speculation book, and then two things for my personal collection. On to the next dealer now. I ended up bundling these next six books together and paying only 30 bucks, so that ends up being $5 per book. We've got X-Force number two, the second appearance of Deadpool. I always pick this up if I can get it for $5 or less because, you know, it's a great secondary key, second appearance uh, of Deadpool um, to pick up, especially if you can't afford a New Mutants 98, which is a very pricey book at this point. Uh, to go along with that, in the X-Force run, we've got not just one, but two copies of number 15, a classic cover featuring a battle between Deadpool and Cable. Really great yellow background makes it pop. One of my favorite covers from this run and something that those Cable and Deadpool collectors are always looking to pick up. Um, you know, secondary keys, basically, if you can't afford their first appearances. Uh, going along with this, this is a nice one right here. Marvel Premiere number 11. And I think a lot of people overlook this book. Um, this is an origin story of Doctor Strange. We got a really awesome, uh, you know, cover right here and, uh, you know, an early Bronze Age book, a 20 center. Um, I actually sold a copy with a detached cover recently of this for $10. So picking this copy up, which is more of a mid-grade copy for 5 bucks, definitely okay with that. This next one is an upgrade to my personal collection. Uh, I've got a really low-grade copy, but I found this nice mid-grade copy of Amazing Adventures number 15. This is the first book in which Beast appears with blue fur. Prior to this, he has gray fur for a few issues, and even prior to that, he had no fur during the original X-Men run. Um, so, yeah, re really cool um, you know, development of this character. And when I think Beast, I think blue fur. I, and I, I, We probably all do, unless we were reading X-Men in the, in the 60s and early 70s, but... Uh, I don't know about you guys. I was uh, far from being alive at that point. Um, so this is, you know, a really classic transformation with Beast um, getting this blue fur, which was, you know, carried on until today. Um, like I said, this is an upgrade to my personal collection. Um, so I'll probably be selling the lower grade copy that I have. Um, here's another nice Bronze Age key that I got for just five bucks. Kazar and Doctor Doom. In Astonishing Tales number six, this is the first appearance of Bobby Morse, who is known as Mockingbird. Now, we just got a revelation recently that uh, Clint Barton's wife, Laura Barton, is in fact the character known as Mockingbird in the MCU. So this book has gone up quite a bit in price since that uh, you know debut or uh, that information was uh, given to us in the Hawkeye uh, television series. And, uh, yeah, people are picking this book up. It's got a big MCU connection now. Um, and for five bucks, definitely happy. I've seen these sell for $25.30. Uh, this is a mid grade copy, so probably not quite that much, but, uh, you know, definitely more than the $5 that I bought it for. And, uh, yeah, that, those are the six books from this dealer. Uh, the next dealer gave me a good one. And when I say a good one, I really do mean just one book. Um, I didn't even bother haggling on the price here because I thought it was more than fair, but this is a nice high-grade copy of X-Men 150, the origin of Magneto, particularly referring to his um, origins of uh, you know coming from a Jewish family in Europe during World War II and escaping the Holocaust. And you know this is a, an important piece of um, Magneto's backstory, and like I said, just a really nice high-grade copy. Definitely going to be replacing my personal collection copy um and you know for eight bucks i was happy with that price didn't even bother negotiating i got this book from humble comics who i've bought stuff from before at conventions we follow each other on instagram definitely go check him out he's got some great stuff and he's a really nice guy at that before we move on to the big bundle at the end we've got one more small one and I paid just $12 for these six books. We've got New Mutants, number 87, the first appearance of Cable, but it's the second print. 
The first print, very expensive. This is a great placeholder in your collection if you, uh, you know, just want to have a copy before you can pick up the first printing. You can tell them apart very easily because this one has a gold background as opposed to the first printing, which isn't like a, it's a deep orange, almost red background. Very easy to tell them apart. Um, and not just one copy, but there were two. I bundled them together with a couple of dollar bin books, and uh, I paid just $12, like I said. Uh, next one is the Metal Men number 43. If you've seen some of my recent videos, uh, my dad requested I find some Metal Men books from the, the 60s and 70s for him, the stuff that he grew up on and read as a kid. He wanted to reread some of those stories, so I've been compiling a couple of those when I can get them on the cheap. Um, this one is from, it's from the seventies. So it's probably after the time that he stopped reading, but nonetheless, it's part of that same original metal men run. Uh, the next three are all the same book, all poly bagged versions of adventures of Superman number 500. This is a double key issue. First cameo of steel and first cameo of Superboy, but it's not a very expensive book because of the massive print run in the early part of the 90s. So these are pretty easy to find. I pull them out of dollar bins. I see them for, you know, three to five dollars most of the time. Um, some people, you know, really high grade, maybe a newsstand might go for like 10 to 15. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, this is a key that people pick up. Um, so whenever I can get it for a buck or less, I pick it up as long as it's in good shape. These three are still poly bagged, but from the outside, it doesn't look like there's any damage on the poly bag or anything like that that would tell me that the book inside is damaged in any way. So I figured, hey, why not pick them up? I'm bundling some books together. Most of the books that I got from this haul were purchased from one dealer and that's Bad Fish Comics. I saved this for last because I got the most books from him and probably the best books from him. If you're ever in the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania area at a local comic show, look out for this guy and definitely go give him a follow over on Instagram. He had a dollar bin or actually a couple dollar bins, a couple of two dollar bins and a couple of three dollar and up bins. In addition to some wall books, I got a little bit of everything, bundled it together and got a really great price and quite honestly his prices were already pretty low to begin with even without the bundle first up pull this one out of a dollar bin we've got fantastic for 352 this is the first cameo appearance of mobius m mobius owen wilson's character from the loki television show is that guy coming back in the mcu i think so i think there probably will be a loki season two there's already been some rumors about it i believe so Let's hope that we see a little bit more of him in the future. And uh, yeah, great little key to pick up for just a buck. Uh, next, we've got Vision and Scarlet Witch number six. Uh, recently, I picked up a number one and two. In fact, it was the day before this convention. I picked it up while out hunting with Mint Hunter Comics in our local shops. So I got one and two. Why not pick up six for a buck as well? Now I've got three out of the 12 books for the miniseries. Maybe I'll try to complete it. Up next, we got Double Dragon number one. I was a big fan of Double Dragon as a kid, so you know, just picking up this $1 uh, you know, first issue, uh, first comic appearance, definitely cool with me. Uh, this one was not a dollar, but it was only five bucks, and I could not believe that it was so cheap. And again, with the bundle, I really paid less than five for it. We've got Punisher number one. Newsstand edition from the 1987 ongoing series, the first Punisher ongoing series, his, his second volume total. You know, he did have a limited series before this. I was stoked to find this. It definitely has some waves in the cover, but definitely st stuff that I can press out pretty easily. I didn't see any like color breaks or anything like that. So this one's going to go in the press and it, it might end up replacing my uh, my personal collection copy. Sticking with the topic of Punisher. We got Punisher Warzone number one as well. This was, in fact, in the dollar bin. Uh, pretty easy book to find, mass printed during the 90s. It's got this pretty cool embossed die cut cover. Um, but yeah, for a dollar, I will pick this up every day. Typically sells for about five. Um, then we got, oh man, I keep picking this book up and they keep selling immediately in claim sales. What if Hulk went berserk? And the real draw to this book is the incredible Bill Sienkiewicz cover. 
Love that 80s, like weird, trippy Sinkevitz stuff that we have come to love. Could not believe this was there for so cheap. I think I paid $5 for this. Um, we got Silver Surfer number 34, Thanos cover, really classic cover from this 90s run. In addition to that, it's a newsstand. Hard to find those 90s newsstands. Stoked about that one. Um, we got uh, Incredible Hulk and Wolverine number one. This was a really cool reprint. In fact, the first reprint of the uh, first appearances of Wolverine. Uh, it has both the books, number 180, his first cameo appearance, as well as 181, his first full appearance. Both of those compiled together in the pages of this book. So if you missed out on 180 and 181, those books are astronomically expensive. If you want to read it, you can pick up this copy pretty cheap. And, uh, you know, it's a nice little reprint to have with a great cover. Then we got Iron Man number, oh, what is this? 254. Not a key or anything, but it's got a Santa Claus cover, especially around the holidays. These are great books to have for people to pick up. Just a fun little cover. Um, you know, we had some Santa Claus uh, action going on with the the hot comic list a couple months ago, where Santa was uh, it was the holiday special from like 1995, where Santa is revealed to be a uh, Omega level mutant. Um, I thought that was a, a funny one to be on the list, but yeah, it ended up there. People. Picking that book up. It is uh, it is considered a key. Oh, you remember this from earlier in the video? Guess what? Got another copy. This one was like two bucks, even less than the other one. Same thing. Glow in the Dark Ghost Rider cover. People love to pick this thing up. Then we got Dark Hawk number two. Now, I've picked up a couple copies of this recently, as long as I can get it for a buck or two, because this is the second appearance of Dark Hawk. And as we know, when first appearances go up significantly, the second appearances usually are pulled up a little bit as well. The first appearance of Darkhawk has gotten significantly more expensive over the last two years. Do you do I think we're going to see this character in the MCU? Maybe, maybe in a minor role. But either way, um, you know, I think over time this second appearance could see a value of five to ten dollars, as opposed to like the one to three dollars where I find it at now. So I picked it up. Why not? Then we got New Mutants, another Sienkiewicz cover, number 24, newsstand edition. And this is a really sharp copy, uh, so I picked it up to replace uh, my personal collection copy, which I don't think is quite as high grade as this one. i got to put some of these down here, and then we'll be on to the next, which is a nice one. We got Doom 2099, number one. Um, we saw Spider-Man 2099 in a trailer for um across the spider verse and since then a lot of 2099 stuff has been uh popping up a little bit i have certainly sold a lot of 2099 books in my claim sale and that's because people are you know speculating a little bit maybe people are nostalgic for it or people are just trying to get the whole sets together especially of the number ones which all have these foil covers looks pretty cool all together in a group so we got doom 2099 We've got Punisher 2099, not just one copy, but two copies. And then we got Ravager 2099. I don't think a lot of people care too much about this one, but hey, whatever. These were in the dollar bin. I was happy to pick them up. Then we've got an Avengers key issue. In this issue, Spider-Man tries to join the Avengers, and he is rejected. Um, great cover, though, with, with Spidey in the foreground and the, the Avengers in the background. Um, and just a little cool key significance. It was two bucks, so I threw it in. And then we're on to Deathlock number one. This is the 90s run of Deathlock, and it's the first appearance of this version of Deathlock. To be honest, I forget the name of the character. I think it's Colin something. Um, but yeah, first version, first, I think the third version of Deathlock. I don't really remember, but a great foil 90s cover. Then we got X-Force number one. I'm always picking up these X-Force keys because they're you know pretty affordable and people will pick them up. This is the second printing. Again, gold background. I mentioned it earlier in the video about that New Mutants book. Gold background often with the X-Books signifies second printing, including this one. Uh, we got some more X-Force here. We got number two again. I talked about it already already in this video, so no sense in doing it again. But guess what? We got two copies. Not just that, but we got an X-Force 11 as well. First, uh, sorry, this is four. 
I, I got ahead of myself. X-Force 4, this is the third appearance of Deadpool, even a little bit cheaper um, than the, the second appearance and a great Spidey appearance on the cover here as well. Like I said, I got ahead of myself. I found this nice newsstand copy of the first Domino for just five bucks. Definitely an easy pickup, and it looks super sharp to me. This one might end up getting sent into CGC. We'll find out. Um, then we got X-Force number 15. Uh, we got Cable and uh, and uh, Deadpool on the front. I mentioned this earlier, so I won't stay on this for too long. Then we got a book from a recent hot list. Warlock and the Infinity Stone, number two. We know we're getting, sorry, Infinity Watch, number two. We're getting Warlock in the MCU. That has been confirmed. They are filming that movie already. Actor has been announced. Um, and a lot of people are speculating on this, especially this book, which is the first appearance of of the Infinity Watch. So are we going to see that? Eh, it's not for sure, but it is definitely possible. Let's make some room up here and get some more books up. We're coming down to the end of it, but we got some nice ones up here next. Always, always we'll pick these up for a buck. They sell for about five. It's X-Men number one. It's a bunch of different covers. Kind of the, not the first variant comic, but the first like mass selling variant comic. Uh, in fact, the highest sold comic book of all time, this covers my favorite, the Magneto one, but they are all certainly awesome, all high grade. And, uh, you know, after the bundle price, I probably paid about a dollar each on them. Moving up to X-Men number eight from that same run, still in the Jim Lee part of the run while he, where he was doing the art. We've got um, the first appearance of Belladonna, um, Gambit's ex-wife, and um Speaking of wives, we've got the wedding of Scott Summers and Jean Grey in issue number 30. These are always, uh, you know, just key issues that I pick up that um, are, are really great to have at claim sales and in convention boxes because people are always looking for these issues to fill in their, uh, their X-Men run or just to get some keys and great covers. A little bit higher in that run now, we got X-Men number 50, the first appearance of Post, the Herald of Galactus. Um, or not Galactus, the Herald of Onslaught. Um, if you guys, uh, you know, know a lot about X-Men, um, Onslaught basically was a combination between, like, the, the entity within uh, Professor X and Magneto. And, uh, yeah, they, you know, whatever, super powerful and all that stuff. Could we see Onslaught? Maybe. Either way, just a great key to have for cheap. Then we got Ren and Stimpy number one. I picked one of these up recently. It instantly sold at a claim sale, so I figured why not get another one? And this one right here, this one's staying in the personal collection. I've mentioned this a couple times recently. I'm picking up copies of uh, the, the books from the, the Spider-Woman run, the original run from the Bronze Age, um, because it's only 50 issues long. Easy to get, and honestly, I have most of it already. I did not have this number five, so for three bucks, I'm happy with that, especially because I bundled it together. Now, that's the last of the Marvel books, but before we go on to DC, we got this crossover. This is Amalgam Comics crossover between Marvel and DC, and uh, basically, they would take two of their characters, one, one from each publisher, and smash them together. This is Spider-Boy, combination of Spider-Man and Superboy put together pretty cool stuff one of my favorite um you know dark claw takes the cake from uh, amalgam in my opinion but uh spider boy is definitely a good one on to the dc books now and there were uh, not quite as many as marvel which is pretty typical for me um as i'm more of a marvel guy but we got batman 284 this is a pretty cool key because it's the first time that the uh the the classic DC bullet logo was used on a Batman book. It came out that year. Uh, this is probably what late seventies, something like that to 30 center, maybe mid seventies. Um, but yeah, first time they use the classic DC bullet logo that they still use, uh, you know, pretty often today. And there was also number 85. Now these were both in the dollar bin, but they're pretty beat up. These are great reader copies to have, and they're going to, you know, hold that place in my Batman run until I get nicer copies. Um, then we got some Brave and the Bold. This is a, you know, Batman versus Green Lantern. Two of the most popular characters from DC. In fact, 
I'll tell you, as far as like claim sales go, I have more people requesting Batman and Green Lantern than any other DC character. So I figured this would be a great little book to have available on the cheap for people to pick up at claim sales. Then we got Batman Shadow of the Bat, number one, first appearance of Victor Zaz. And we got Steel number one. Now, this is a regular Steel number one, which I was happy to pay a dollar for. But I was really happy to pay a dollar for this next one because notice what's different. DC Universe logo at the bottom. These are much rarer. These are actually, I believe they're rarer than newsstands. Um, but there's a lot of collectors out there that seek these DC Universe logos. So always watch out for them from books from the mid-90s. Um, then we got Batman vs. Predator number one. I actually um, got number two and three out of this three-part miniseries in a collection I just bought. So I figured, hey, why not get a one, number one, have the whole collection, and you know, I'm going to read it myself. Maybe I like it. Maybe I won't. If I don't, I can always just ship it off to someone else as a bundle. Uh, a second copy of Shadow of the Bat number one, first Victor Zaz. This one is in the poly bag. It's called the Collector's Set. Not very collectible. Pretty low price book, but a key at that. Then we got Aquaman number one. Uh, this is the first book of the Aquaman run from the 90s. And not only that, but um, it actually marks the 50th anniversary of Aquaman as a character. He debuted in 1941. This book came out in 1991. So that's a you know, pretty awesome old character there. Um, Shazam! New Beginnings number one. This character is obviously getting more and more popular as we get closer to uh, the next movie coming out. We got Black Adam, played by The Rock. That definitely could boost some popularity. DC is definitely trying to keep up with Marvel. They haven't been doing a great job, but bringing The Rock in, that might be a big help. Um, and we got a couple more DC keys here, just some number ones. We got Superman number one uh, from the 80s. Basically what happened was... They changed the name of the regular Superman run, which had been going since like 1939 or 1940. They changed it to Adventures of Superman, and then they made a new run called Superman. I have no idea why they didn't just change the just, you know, use Adventures of Superman for this book. But hey, it is what it is. If you know why, definitely leave in the comments below because I would be curious to find out. Then we got Guy Gardner number one. Really cheap book to find, um, you know, first Guy Gardner solo run and uh, you know, a pretty, uh, pretty popular character there. Then we got Dark Knight. This is uh, one of the four covers. I believe there's like teal, yellow, orange and magenta. Uh, this is obviously the teal one. And, uh, you know, I like to pick them up in a bundle if possible, but I only found this one. So I'll see if I have any copies and, you know, it's easier to sell them off that way with all four covers. Then we got Batman number 401. There's some discrepancy on whether this is the first appearance of Magpie or if it's the, the Superman book that she premieres in. Um, they both came out around the same time. So this is either first or second appearance. Not really sure. But this was in the dollar bin. So yank got that out of there. And then we're on to the indie books. And uh, only a couple of them, and then we'll get on to the real expensive, or not really expensive, but the nicer stuff that I found. I'm going to spawn number two, Todd McFarlane classic. You can't go wrong with early spawn stuff, especially in a high grade. And this was only two bucks, so I, I think it was definitely a really good deal. Um, same thing with spawn number eight. We got Todd McFarlane homaging Todd McFarlane here with the, uh, the rip of uh, Spider-Man number one cover. And then we got the Max number one. There wasn't just one copy of this book, but two. I like picking up these image number ones when you can get them for a dollar or less. They're just great to have uh, available just in case someone wants to throw it in with an order. And then last but not least, kind of going along the same lines, not an image number one, but a Valiant number one, Turok the Dinosaur Hunter. It's got an embossed foil cover, very, very 90s. Let's get down to these better books that I found, and some of these were actually in the dollar bins. Was very surprised to see that, but hey, I will, I will take them all day for that price. 
we have Green Lantern 49. Now, this is part of the uh, Emerald Twilight uh, story arc, which is the story arc that introduced Kyle Rayner. A lot of people pick up all of these books, um, you know, from this run. Um, so even the ones that aren't considered keys necessarily are pretty, um, you know, valuable due to that, um, you know, the, the collectability and the popularity of Green Lantern and Kyle Rayner. Um, you know, this one particularly goes for about 15 to $20 and it's a pretty high grade copy. So paying a dollar for it definitely made me happy there. Um, this was not in the dollar bin. This was marked at five, but this is a classic Todd McFarlane ASM cover featuring Joe Fixit, the Gray Hulk, and it's a newsstand. I couldn't say no to that for five bucks, even with a couple spine ticks. Guess what? There wasn't just one. There were two, both newsstand editions. Stoked about that. Um, another. No, this isn't Todd McFarlane. This is this is Eric Larson. Another Eric Larson, Amazing Spider-Man. Again, a classic cover featuring Venom. And you know it's Eric Larson because it's got that long, slobbery Venom tongue that he not only came up with, uh, but he's kind of like, uh, he's the guy to go to for the, the slobbery Venom tongue. And apparently Todd McFarlane doesn't like it too much, but that's okay. I like both versions of Venom, both the, that those two get, uh, creators have done. Put this in the beginning of the video because I was so surprised. I've actually never really found this. I, I found it in the wild, but it's never been at an appropriate price. Um, so I, I was I was definitely happy to find this, uh, you know, for just 15 bucks. It's the Vengeance of Bane, number one. Uh, it's the first appearance of Bane. It's the second printing, but even the second printing has been selling on eBay for about $45. It was marked at 15 That's an easy pickup in my mind. Then we've got the only book that I grabbed off the wall that day, X-Men number four from the 90s run. We've got the first appearance of Omega Red. Now, I mentioned this recently in a spec video. Not only that, but I mentioned that I didn't have a raw copy. Guess what? Now I do. In fact, I have two because I picked up two over the weekend. Uh, that being said, um, we kind of came to a, an agreement on a number. Everything from this collection added up to something and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And I was given a discount for bundling. And then I said, you know what? Let me get that X-Men for 20 bucks. You know, let, let's throw that in at the end. He had it marked at 40. So I got a great deal on that. Um, you know, just 20 bucks for this this uh, first Omega Red. And uh, got to see which copy is better. Keep that one on my personal collection and pass the other one on eventually. Now, the last book. Very, very rarely do I even see this book. It is hard to find, um, and I've certainly never even dreamed of finding it in a dollar bin. Now, it is very low grade. In fact, it has a detached cover, but it is definitely worth more than a dollar. We've got Web of Spider-Man 118, the first appearance of Scarlet Spider. Now, I grew up in a time, and I actually got into comics during the Clone Saga, you can say what you want about the Clone Saga. There's certainly some parts that are not so great, but it has a lot of nostalgia for me. I really like the character of Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, who initially premiered in the 70s and then came back in the 90s. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would find this book in a dollar bin, but there it was. Like I said, it has a detached cover, but there was a copy that sold on eBay recently for $15, and not only was the cover completely like ripped in half but it was like soiled all over it and it, it was just in bad shape worse than this one and it sold for 15 bucks so I, you know even at a value of just a little bit more than that 20 25 dollars uh, this was a great buy for a dollar very happy about that and i'm sure i will have no problem finding someone who wants this book for an affordable price because most of the time, it's selling for 60 80 In fact, 9.8s sell for over $600. It's an expensive book. Um, now, that being said, I'm, I'm really stoked about this bundle. In fact, I will tell you guys now, I paid $150 for all of these books. Now, that is all the dollar bin and $2 bin books. And we've got the first appearance of Omega Red and Bane and Scarlet Spider and that Kyle Rayner book. All that stuff, just 150 bucks. Very happy about that. Um, 
So if you were doing your math over the course of the day, uh, I, I know I didn't mention all of the prices, but um, you know I, I spent a little under three hundred dollars. Uh, I think about two seventy five, two eighty over the course of the day, and um, I, I think optimistically, I may have gotten. You know, this is optimistically again. Remember. We don't always sell everything. We don't always sell everything at the highest price. But optimistically, I think it is pretty close to $1,000 worth of stuff. So that would be a triple up. Being optimistic, obviously, it would take some time to do that. But I think pretty easily, I can take out the two X-Men book that are staying in my personal collection, which are a higher value. Um, and I can get rid of this stuff for probably about $500. That's almost a double up while taking two Silver Age X-Men books into my personal collection. So that's about a $100 value right there. So that's more than a double up at that point if I, uh, you know, consider the X-Men books that are uh, the, their value and I'm staying in my collection. Either way, definitely a great buy. Definitely can, um, you know, profit off, uh, you know, some, some of these for future claim sales and future conventions that I do while also adding to my personal collection. And that is really my goal for this hobby have the hobby, you know, kind of pay for itself and, you know, possibly profit from a little bit. Um, I have a lot of fun going to these conventions, not just to pick through the comic books, but also to meet and chat with people and see what they got. That's one of my favorite things, bumping into someone I know and saying, hey, what'd you get? Oh, where'd you get it? Oh, maybe I'll go check out that deal or maybe they got some more good deals there. Um, always a fun time. So, hey, guys, thanks for sticking around. I know this is a long video, but I appreciate you watching it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up for a like and leave a comment down below. All that stuff and more. I appreciate your support. And until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.